Hey guys, uh, so I uh, did the uh, top 10 uni press books tag yesterday, um, and I was only able to talk about seven university press books. Um, by the way, that was a tag uh, created by uh, Crystal over at Biblio Atlas, um, and I'll leave a link to her video for this one. This isn't really formally part of the tag. Uh, I just said in that video that I wanted to talk some about the university press books that I haven't read. Um, in my tag video, I talked about the seven that I have read. These, this video will be me just chatting very briefly about um, each of the ones that I uh, have read. Um, so anyway, I will just get right to it. I'm not going to rank them or anything because I haven't read any of them, so I can't really. Um, but I'll probably talk... Uh, I'll probably mention which ones I'm most excited to read. Um, so anyway, starting with uh, one that I just recently hauled. This is Childhood, Youth, and Exile by Alexander Harrison. And um, this is a memoir from the 19th century. And Al Alexander Harrison was a revolutionary. He was a Marxist and um, was actually uh, imprisoned and then exiled by uh, the Russian government in the 19th century, the Tsarist Russian government. Um, and this memoir of his about uh, the development of his thought, his revolutionary thought, and his life uh, was very influential on a lot of uh, other revolutionaries in the, in the 19th century. Uh, and uh, I actually found out about it uh, through the biography of Friedrich Nietzsche that I'm currently reading. Um, and uh, it was it was an influence on some of his friends. Uh, it, the book doesn't say that he was a big fan of it, but uh, it was a big f uh, influence on some of Nietzsche's friends. Um, and the back cover here says that it was uh, it is on a par with uh, the works of Dostoevsky and Tolstoy and Turgenev in terms of its um, in terms of uh, it as a you know pinnacle of Russian literature. So, yeah, uh, I just uh, found this like a day after I read about it in Nietzsche's in the biography of Nietzsche, so I just grabbed it, because why not? Um, and this, by the way, is published by Oxford University Press, as you maybe uh, noticed. Um, but yeah, it's a part of their Oxford's World Classic series, so yeah. Um, next is uh, I Will Fight No More Forever, uh, Chief Joseph and the Nez Perce War by Merrill Beale. And um, this uh, was uh, published by uh, Washington University Press. Uh, Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce was, um, fought one of the last Indian wars uh, in the United against the United States government. He uh, attempted to flee to Canada from the United States government after the American um, government declared war on him after some of some young warriors of his killed some white people because those white people were trespassing on Nez Perce lands. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is just a biography of him. And uh, I have wanted to read more books about Chief Joseph for a long time. I actually wrote a uh, paper about the Nez Perce War in high school uh, and forgot a lot of what I learned from that um, and wanted to, um, you know, sort of reacquire all that knowledge and um, and reads more substantially on the subject because obviously you know you, you when you're in high school you you read minimally to write the paper and then you forget all of it right um, so anyway yeah but it's a subject I'm really interested in um, next is a, a book by Yale University Press um, this is the making of the Middle Ages by R W Southern and um, yeah I had to reinforce this one with tape because it was almost falling apart when I got it but it's it's nice and sturdy now. Um, so yeah, this is just a discussion, basic discussion and history of the of the Middle Ages. Um, it has blurbs from the Times Literary Supplement and The Economist. Um, so I kind of guess that it would probably be a good book, uh, or at least um, scholarly, uh, scholarly rigorous. Um, so yeah, anyway, I, I at some point I'm going to buckle down and read more about the Middle Ages. This is actually one of two books that I have about the Middle Ages. Um, so eventually I will uh, get become more of a Middle Ages uh, buff than I am. Um, next is a book on a subject that I am very interested in. It is uh, The Classical Tradition by Gilbert Hyatt. And this was published by Oxford University Press. Uh, once again, that theme that uh, I have a thing for Oxford Uni for University Press is definitely coming through. Um, and this is just a discussion of the influence that, class the, that the classics of Greece and Rome have had um, throughout the history of Western literature. Uh, he literally goes through uh, from, you know, the fall of the Roman Empire to the early 20th century. How did various works of Greek and Roman literature affect other works of literature? You know, how did they affect 
Shakespeare? How did they affect um, Ben Johnson or Samuel Johnson or um, you know the works of Shelley and uh, Milton and such? Um, and yeah, so it's it's a relatively big book, uh, and uh, it's just it's on the subject that I love, as you all know. I love the classics of Greece and Rome, so I definitely uh, want to get around to that in not too distant future. Um, next is um, this book is published by uh, Princeton University Press. This is Anatomy of Cri Criticism, uh, four essays by Northrop Frye. Uh, Northrop Frye is a famous uh, literary critic who I have wanted to read for quite some time. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, and this was one of the collections of his work that I have heard about the most as sort of one of his seminal uh, works. And so uh, I thought I would just read to you the table of contents. So the first essay is called Historical Criticism, Criticism Theory of Modes. Uh, the second essay is called Ethical Criticism, uh, Theory of Symbols. The third essay is called Archetypal Criticism, Theory of Myths. That does sound very interesting. And the fourth essay is called uh, Rhetorical Criticism, Theory of Genres. Um, and yeah, I, um, I just uh, am sort of... I sort of am just wanting to teach myself as much about literature as I can by reading literature, but also reading literary criticism. And so I think that books like this that I like to read are just a part of that. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to be talking about another book that is sort of in that same vein, in that same sort of um, desire to educate myself on literature. So, yeah, anyway, that's definitely one I'm uh, eager to read. Um the next book was published by Yale University Press. This is The Praise of Folly by Erasmus. And this translation is by Clarence Miller. And it also has a commentary by Clarence Miller. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, The Praise of Folly is um, sort of Erasmus's uh, sort of uh, satire on the Catholic Church and all the uh, uh, iniquities of the Catholic Church. Um, and he wrote it before Martin Luther, uh, you know, had hammered his 95 theses to the wall of, um, of the church of whichever place it was, sorry. Um, and yeah, I have actually read The Favorite Praise of Folly in another translation before and didn't really like it, and I'm hoping that this translation will be better, um, and I'm hoping that maybe the commentary will, uh, enlighten me a bit more on the text because I had a hard time seeing why it was so important, um, but we will see. I will start with just reading the text and trying to enjoy it. Uh, by itself, uh, because it's supposed to be enjoyed that way. So, anyway, uh, next is um, Alfred the Great, The King and His England by Eleanor Shipley Duckett. This was published by Chicago University Press. I think this is actually a part of a series of um, sort of brief uh, biographies published by uh, the University of Chicago Press. Um, and yeah, so Alfred the Great was a... a a king of England who ruled not long after the fall of the Roman Empire. He actually, um, he actually ruled over England, uh, soon after the time of, the time that was covered in Boethius's, oh, not Boethius, Bede's, uh, Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which is a book that I, I really loved, I read last year and really loved. Um, and I'm sort of, I, that, reading that got me interested in that sort of time period just after the fall of the Roman Empire, and, um, Alfred the Great was obviously a titan at the time, um, but I, I don't know much about him, unfortunately. But um, yeah, that should be interesting, and uh, I have heard good things about Eleanor Shipley Duckett, so yeah. Uh, all right, next we go back to Oxford University Press. Uh, this is the Oxford Book of Prayer, and um, this is not a book I would ever read cover to cover. Um, it's just a collection of prayers from various religions and denominations, and um, yeah, so why would you read that cover to cover when it's just a collection like that? Um, this is a book that I sort of peruse every now and then, um, just because I find prayers beautiful. That I think prayers, you know, formal prayers have some of the um, most beautiful writing anywhere. Um, so anyway, where do they have prayers from in this book? There are... Um, Prayers from the scriptures, from the Bible, um, prayers from, prayers of Christians, um, prayers of the church, um, what are, uh, prayers from other traditions. So you have Jewish prayers, Indian prayers, Buddhist prayers, Chinese prayers, Zoroastrian, uh, Muslim, uh, Japanese. Um, so yeah, it, it has 
a very broad selection, and uh, yeah, again, just something I peruse every now and then because I find the writing beautiful in prayers. Um, next is, uh, again, Oxford University Press. This is uh, the Oxford Annotated Apocrypha. Uh, I don't know how well that spine tells you. Um, the Oxford Annotated Apocrypha in the uh, Revised Standard Version. And, um, yeah, so, uh, the Apocrypha are obviously the books of the Bible that aren't formally a part of the Biblical canon, but that are, have been considered very important, uh, by Christians throughout history, um, and I've never read them, so, uh, when I do, I will have a nice annotated edition to read. Uh, next, uh, going back to literature and to that theme I was talking about, uh, this was published by the University of Minnesota Press. Uh, this is Literary Theory, an introduction by uh, Terry Eagleton. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's just a basic introduction to the various trends in literary criticism. And also, it sort of begins with a sort of history of the development of literature, of uh, not just literary criticism, but literature in general. So the uh, emergence of the novel as the major form uh, in literature. And I actually did start to read this book and got some something like 40, 30, 40 pages into it. And uh, it just got kind of kind of got subsumed by other books I was reading at the time. Uh, but I absolutely want to read it uh, again because I'm just trying to teach myself as much as possible about literature and literary criticism. And this is just a part of that. And this also discusses many topics that I'm interested in. It talks about psychoanalysis. It talks about uh, postmodernism and such. Um, so it just, and, and structuralism as well. Uh, so those are all just topics I'm interested in. Um, and he touches on a lot of them briefly. So uh, yeah, it's just kind of, uh, again, uh, something that I just want to read to educate myself. Um, but so I will read it. Uh, that's another one that I, I am really looking forward to read. Next one, if we go back to uh, Yale University Press. This is uh, The Anatomy of Criticism, Literature as a Way of Life by Harold Bloom. And uh, this book is sort of an update on his uh, first book, The Anxiety of Influence. Actually, I don't know if The Anxiety of Influence was his first book, but it's probably his, the book he's most famous for, The Anxiety of Influence, where he put forth this theory of literary influence, of how poets are influenced by, poets, by past poets, and how that... Um, pushes them to create, um, and in this book he sort of updates that theory a little bit, um, and so I'm very interested in that theory, but uh, I haven't yet found a copy of The Anxiety of Influence, so the anatomy of influence will have to do. Um, and also I think that this is, um, in another way, just kind of a general discussion of Harold Bloom's history in literature, sort of a memoir in books. Um, I think that's sort of the deal. I think I remember him saying in an interview that that's what it was, and I love things like that, so I'm hoping that that's true. Um, so yeah. Uh, next, um, so these last two are Oxford, are not only Oxford University Presses, but um, they are uh, Oxford Histories. So we have um, the Oxford History of the United States, The Battle Cry of Freedom, The Civil War Era by James McPherson. And this actually won the Pulitzer Prize for history. Um, and uh, I got really interested in the Civil War earlier this year when I watched the Ken Burns documentary, and uh, then I saw this gigantic history of the Civil War at uh, at a library sale. So why not? Um, you know, I, it's a huge book. Again, going to take me a while to get through when I get around to reading it, but uh, definitely a subject I'm very interested in. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, the short Oxford history of English literature by Andrew Sanders. And um, again, uh, very much up my alley because of what I said uh, regarding, uh, you know, sort of my desire to educate myself. Um, so yeah, and, I, and I, I love the history of literature. I love learning about it, how different um, writers influenced future writers um, and how current writers are influenced by past writers. I find that topic very interesting, which might be why I'm a, a fan of Harold Bloom since his big thing is literary influence. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's, uh, this is one I, I really don't want to wait too long to read. Um, so yeah, if I had to, um, <clears throat> if I had to decide on which of these I'm most excited to read, um, there are probably too many for me to, um, say just a few, but definitely the, uh, biography of Chief Joseph, um, definitely, uh, the Oxford history of English literature, definitely the history of the Civil War I'm super excited for, uh, the anatomy of influence I'm super excited for, uh, 
literary theory, definitely um, the anatomy of criticism. I may be a bit trepidatious about. I don't quite know how Northrop Fry is as a writer, so I'm not sure I will love his writing. So we'll see about that. Um, but then, obviously, the classical tradition. <laughs> you know, I have I have to be enthusiastic about that. Um, anyway, so uh, those are some uh, of the un those are all of the University Press books that I own that I haven't read. Um, if you've read these books or want to read them, give me your thoughts. And um, yeah, anyway, thank you, Crystal, for creating this tag and uh, the read along of. Um, University Press Books. T Crystal is also doing uh, a read-along of University Press Books in September where she basically just encourages you to read uh, some University Press Books uh, to support University Presses. Um, so anyway, uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I will be back with another video not too soon. So um, anyway, thanks guys. Bye.